Greetings. Uh, welcome to Faith Baptist Church uh, online version. Uh, what we're doing today, I'm here to bring you the message this morning. Uh, we are so blessed that we have the kind of technology that we can still bring the message of God's Word to you right into your homes during this time that many are uh, self-isolating. And so we're, we're so blessed and we thank the Lord that we have this kind of technology to do so. Um, I have a few announcements for you. First of all, you're probably wondering why Pastor Gene isn't bringing you this message. I was wondering that as well. Uh, I got a call yesterday because Pastor Gene received the news of uh, those who should be self-isolating uh, who have left the country in the last 14 days, which he had done about uh, eight or so days ago. Uh, he had returned from seeing his mother-in-law in the States, and so he's unable to be here to record this because uh, he's uh, observing that. And so uh, I have the privilege to, to share the message with you today, and I believe it's, uh, it's something that we all need to hear and can be encouraged by today. So uh, I have uh, several other messages. I want to let you know that our church office is uh, going to be closed. You can't just uh, pop by or anything like that because it will be closed uh, during this time until further notice. But we will do our best to have somebody answering the phones uh, so you can uh, get the information that you need uh, or even uh, uh, you know, share prayer requests, uh, things that, uh, the needs that you have. Whatever it might be, you can, you can still contact the church and we'll be, do the best we can to have somebody here to answer those calls during office hours. Um, I want to really point you to the church ministries, the, the quarantine ministries uh, webpage that we have right now inside of our, uh, inside of our webpage at fbcregina.ca. That's our web, website and more specifically fbcregina.ca slash quarantine. Uh, you can check that out, and we have several different quarantine ministries for you during this time. Uh, we've really been work, working hard this week, uh, trying to develop some different things that uh, you guys can be doing as a family, uh, different ministries that uh, can, can bless you. So here's just a, a list of different things that we have there right on that video. So uh, first off, uh, we'll make sure we have a link for our Sunday morning messages that come out at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Uh, I also uh, have a link there for the Sunday school lesson that I just did. It's specifically made for you in your home, in your living room, watching it uh, with your family or your spouse, whatever it might be, or even if you're at home by yourself, you can do this. Uh, it's basically will happen you watch the video and you pause it during the scripture readings and you read the scripture to the family. There'll be a screen that says, hey, pause and read this or pause and discuss this. Um, and so you do that as a family. When you're ready, you press play again, you continue on. Please don't just watch the video from start to finish. Uh, that won't have as much value and as much blessing for you as uh, participating. Even if you're al home alone and you're doing that, maybe call somebody up while you do it. Have the discussion points. Or maybe uh, just write down some of your answers. Engage with, uh, with the scriptures uh, for that. So that's a Sunday school option that will be available to you as well. Um, several other things like our youth um, our youth programs. Uh, still, we're, we're taking those online as well. I've been using Zoom uh, conference meeting, had our first one with our quizzers on Friday. It went quite well, and so we're just meeting like that. And so we'll be meeting uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for any youth, and on Tuesday and Thursday for quizzing at 2 p.m., always 2 p.m. we'll be meeting uh, to just share God's Word and have some fun together and just still be in community during this time. So that, those links will be on that webpage as well. I'll remind you that's fbcregina.ca slash quarantine. Uh, as well, you'll have different announcements, uh, things that are happening at church, different cancellations, different uh, uh, prayer requests perhaps that you can uh, be made aware of. You can find those there. Um, as well as kids resources. You can, uh, you can find uh, Answers in Genesis and Keys for Kids. We have links for those. They have different resources like uh, videos, good quality videos that are teaching God's Word. Uh, that are entertaining as well uh, and uh, you can find those or different re resources you can print off and your kids can do activities at home uh, so we want to make those available to you as well uh, another key thing uh, it's the last thing that i'll mention that, that's on that web page is uh, our we have a form there that allows you to either uh, ask for help if you are one of those people that is uh, in in quarantine that uh, Ask to self-isolate due to your health, due to your age, whatever it might be. Uh, we want you to be able to still ask for help. Please ask for help. 
uh, don't feel bad about that or anything like that. Uh, you can fill out that form online and you know, I need someone to help me pick up groceries. I need someone to help me, you know, uh, take me to the doctor. I need somebody to help. Uh, I just need a call. I'm feeling lonely, you know, and I just need somebody to call and to pray with me. Uh, those kind of things are there as well. You can not only if you, you are in need, but also if you would like to help in some ways. Uh, there are those options that, hey, I am willing to help. I'm not an at-risk person. I don't have at-risk people in my home. Uh, I can help in these ways, and you can check off which ways you can help. So please, uh, head onto the website and fill out that form so we can minister to, to one another properly. Uh, also want to just uh, direct you as well into the website. You can still give to our church and we encourage you to do so as we, we want to support the ministries of our church still. Uh, you can give several different ways. You can do online giving through our website. You can do e-transfers. Uh, you can send a check in the mail. You can drop off a check just in the mailbox at the church. You can do all those things to continue to support the ministry that we have here. And uh, thank, uh, we want to thank you for continuing to do that as well. Um, so those are the announcements. Quite lengthy to start this video off. A lot of announcements, and uh, usually after announcements, we have some special music. So I've prepared my vocal cords and give you a nice, uh, you know, a cappella song for this uh, to move into the announcements. <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Uh, so no, we're going to move into our message now, uh, and I would like to direct your attention. Actually, before we we, we do that, let's let's bow with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for your great goodness to us. Uh, you are so wonderful, you are so awesome. Uh, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what's going on in our world, you are wonderful. We want to praise you and we want to serve you. Uh, help us to do so, help us to look into your word and find the truths that we need for today to serve you better and to be closer to you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'd like to direct your attention to Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25. Right? Hebrews chapter 20, 19 to 25. I'll give you a moment to turn there. Hebrews chapter 10, 19 to 25. You may be wondering, this, this is a, if you've read this one or if you're familiar with this passage, you may be wondering, this is a bit of an odd passage to choose, but we'll, we'll, we'll share why in a moment. But let's read this together. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promises faithful and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. So you may be asking yourself, Stephen, how, why, why, why this verse? Uh, do not forsake the assembling together. Uh, where are you going with this one, Stephen? Uh, you may be asking yourselves, and we will address that in a moment, but I think it's so important for us, because this is one of the questions I think many people have. Is it right for us to be not meeting together as a congregation? Um, you know, should we still be meeting? Why are we doing this online? So I think it's a good thing to address in this video, as much as Pastor Gene has already addressed it in his in his announcement, that I, I would challenge you to go check that out as well. Um, but we're going we're gonna to address that a little bit in this uh, sermon as well. But in this passage... We see several things. Several things in this passage that are very interesting. First off, we're pointed to Jesus, right? And all that he's accomplished for us. He's done so much through his work on the cross. It says here that having a boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, because of the blood of Jesus, all that he's done for us, we can enter into the Holy of Holies. It's by a new and living way that he's consecrated for us. That being this veil, his flesh, you know, we have a whole lot of tabernacle imagery happening here. And before, they were not allowed to enter into that Holy of Holies, right? And have that personal relationship with God. There was only one, one high priest who was able to do it once a year. And uh, it was very serious. But through Jesus' sacrifice for us in his flesh, his, his flesh became the veil. And because he uh, was willing to sacrifice uh, for us through 
through him, through his body, through his flesh, we are then able to enter into the Holy of Holies, which is absolutely amazing. It's wonderful that we are allowed to do this. And having such a high priest over this house, you know, he is such a wonderful high priest that made it possible. We are a whole body of believers. We are, we are all, uh, we're the saints. We are the, the priesthood of believers. And that is a wonderful, wonderful truth uh, that is done only by Jesus Christ. He has done so much. The riches, we've talked in the past about the riches that we have in Christ. The reason why I'm focusing on this, this, is, this needs to be our focal point, regardless of circumstance. You've heard me preach on this kind of stuff before. Regardless of circumstance, we need to be brought back to Jesus and all that he's done for us. So important to do that. And uh, what I love about this passage is it actually gives us five different actions, this, this, this passage is pointing us to five different actions that we, that are so applicable during these, these uncertain times. Five specific actions. I'd like to, I would like to talk about them, expound on them a little bit. The first one that we see in verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. We have been washed, we've been sprinkled, we have been cleansed of our sin, and because of that, we are worthy, because of Christ, to draw near to God. That is my first challenge for each and every person, whether you're in quarantine or whatever. This is always the first part. We need to draw near to God during this time, at all times, right? We need to draw. God has made it possible for us to draw near to Him, so we need to do so. We have to do so. Let's draw near to Him. Let's have that relationship. Let's dig into God's Word during this time. Let's have our kids dig into God's Word during this time. Let's pray as a family. Let's do devotions as a family. Let's, let's draw near and be earnest in our faith. And parents, you're setting examples for your kids and how to respond to these kind of things. Are you uh, you know, are you focused on everything else other than your relationship with God because of all that's going on in our world? Or are you focusing in on what's really, truly important and drawing closer to Jesus? So that's the first thing that we have to be doing. Making sure our, our, our life is, our relationship with God is in the right place. And one of the major things that keeps us from that is our sin that's in our lives. You know what, that really puts a, puts a big separation between us and God if we are not willing to give that sin up to Him. Obviously, as soon as we give Him up to Him, we ask for forgiveness, that's gone. We can be back in right relationship with Him, right? And so, we need to be confessing that thing. You may, be conf you need, may need to confess your anxiety, your, your worry, your lack of faith during this uncertain time. God, I've been entrusting my, everything into my, my finances or my job or my health, I've been trusting these things instead of you, God. Forgive me of that and, and, and let me draw near to you. You know, or maybe you have something else in your life that you need to turn over to Him. And if you're living that, we got to turn that over to Him. We got to repent of that and turn to Him. That's how we need to do that to draw near to Him. We need to do that. And, and He is, when we finally do, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanses of all unrighteousness, right? And we can be back in that right relationship with Him. So first off, so important, we need to draw near to the Lord during this time. Secondly, uh, in verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. I'll read that again. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. He is so good. Uh, he needs to be where our hope is. Not in our retirement savings that have just gone <laughs> way down. Or in, you know, you, I know you're thinking, yeah, a young guy can say that. But those of you who are close to retirement, that's a, that's a real concern for you right now. But is that where your hope is? Is that where your, your trust is in? Is in the, those finances? Or maybe it's always been in your job. And now there's layoffs. Or you think there might be some coming. Who knows during these times, right? Those are some serious, serious things. But is that where our hope is? Is our hope in our work or our finances or our health? You know, some, some people may only be willing to trust God as long as their health is okay. But what we need to remember 
is that this is not our home. You know, uh, our citizen, if we've placed our faith in Jesus Christ, our citizenship is with Him in heaven. Our hope is with Him in heaven. Right? So we, so basically we, all of our, everything we have, we're banking on Him and our eternity with Him, which is in so much vast, it's so great in comparison to our tiny time here on earth or during this little struggle. And, you know, it may seem like exaggerative, but compared to eternity, this is not a huge deal, right? Even if some of us get the virus, even if some of us pass away, you know, our citizenship is in heaven. You know, we have faith in, in, in Jesus Christ who will give us eternal life after all this. That has to be the focus, and we need to hold fast to that during these uncertain times. Yeah, there's all sorts of things and worries that could be happening around us, but hold fast to Jesus and your eternal destiny, and remember what's truly important, you know, and the security and the, and the safety that you have in His arms, right? Uh, that kind of makes everything else fade away. And we need to be thinking about that as well as our hope in Christ and considering our neighbors, our loved ones that maybe don't know the Lord um, and don't have this hope. If this is where our focus is, we're going to want to be ministering to these individuals, right? You're going to want to find opportunity during these uncertain times to share the gospel with your neighbors with loved ones, picking up the phone and giving people a call, maybe a coworker that also got laid off, give them a call, you know, show some care for them, and then share, share the gospel, share your hope, your security in Christ with them, you know, that's what we're called to do during these times, and if our hope is truly in Him, we're going to want to tell other people about these things, right? It's going to be a desire of our hearts, so let's hold fast to our hope in Christ. Next one we see in verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Now this is so key. We need to be considering one another. I know that the world right now is turning into this mode where, okay, we're in self-isolation. That means completely self-consumed and just worried about ourselves, our families, and taking care of that. I'm going to buy as much toilet paper as possible for no reason, whatever it might be. But it's just like we need to stock up for me, 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 me. It's crazy, the mentality. The world is just showing up perfectly with stocking up on so much things. When, you know, our, our, our people that are in charge of food in our country are like, We've got lots. There's no reason to panic. Uh, but yet we're still, we're just, we're just, it doesn't matter if somebody else actually needs that product. You know, we just need to get as much for ourselves. It just shows the selfishness of mankind right now. And we really need to be a light in how that we consider one another during this time. Is your coworker that maybe also got laid off, are they expecting a call from you? Probably not. It would it'd be a huge testimony to them. Is your neighbor expecting maybe you to come over, hey, do you need help with, you know, all the leaves in your yard right now? Like, or, you know, and just in doing things in a safe way still, not, uh, you know, wanting to uh, offend them with uh, possibly getting them sick or anything like that. But in good ways like that, like, we need to be considering one another. Especially, and, and this is kind of talking about in, in our congregation as well. We need to be considering one another. So, yes, you do need to look at everything, but we shouldn't be completely consumed with, you know, protecting ourselves and our family and stuff like we need to be considering one another. And I think each one of us has a role to play in that, has something that we can do. As I, as I mentioned before on our website, we have an opportunity for you to volunteer for, to help people with the, that have needs. You know, sign up for that. Consider others and, and get out there and, and help people. Maybe you're like, well, I am a person at risk. Do I have to just sit here and, and let other people help me and I can't do anything for anybody? No. That's, that's not what it's like. You need to be wise in how you go about things. And I would, I would, I would share Proverbs 22.3 with you, my paraphrase of it anyway. I, I don't have it right here. But uh, it talks about how the wise man sees danger and hides from it, but a fool continues on and, is, uh, and, and suffers consequences, basically. 
It's like, no, it's a good thing to show some precautions during these times, during the danger that's ahead of us, you know. Uh, but, and so we do need to take those, take those precautions. But is there something that you can do as an at-risk person? Absolutely. Pick up the phone and encourage somebody. Pick up the phone and pray for somebody. You know, whether it be somebody in our congregation you also know is home alone and maybe, maybe quite uh, lonely, you know, that's maybe what you're doing several hours a day is just talking with people, encouraging them, sharing with them something that you read in God's Word today. And that's where the, the drawing near to the Lord comes in as well. Because when we're doing that and we're putting our, our hope in Jesus, He's our focus, we're going to be in God's Word and we're going to have a, you know, a full, we're going to be full of the Holy Spirit. And ready to pour into others. And that avenue can be done over the phone. It can. That's something that you can do. Or if you have the technology to FaceTime someone. Or still meet as a small group over a Zoom conference uh, video. Whatever it might be. Uh, you can find out different ways that you can still meet together. That kind of goes is going into our next point. But still find those ways to meet together. And this, this is talking about our fifth point too that I'll bring up that's at the end of, end of verse 25. And so much more, or sorry, but exhorting one another uh, and so much more as you see the day approaching. We need to be encouraging one another. I think that goes, goes together with uh, considering one another. Um, and we need to find ways to encourage one another. You know, you, we're not meant to be alone in our faith, in our lives. We're meant to be with each other. So find a way, pick up the phone, encourage somebody, uh, be a blessing to someone each and every day. That's a responsibility that we have for one another. Scripture gives us, read the one another's in Scripture. Make sure you understand our responsibility to our fellow believers uh, when it comes to what we should be doing for them. Uh, so whether you're stuck at home, because of isolation, or you do have your, your maybe a family that is younger and has nobody in the family that's at risk, find ways that you can be a blessing and, and meet the needs of those around you, your fellow believers and your neighbors, whatever it might be. Don't just be like the world where we're just so focused on ourselves that we're missing so much opportunity in our communities, in our congregation, right? Let's consider one another. And that kind of falls into our next one, uh, the not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, the meeting together, as is the manner of some. You might be like, okay, Stephen, but like, you, we're not meeting together, we're not assembling together. How are we obeying this passage? Um, first of all, I'd like to bring to attention, let, if you turn with me to Romans, Romans chapter 13. I think this is an important truth that we need to address as we consider not, a, not assembling together, right? We need, to, we need to be considering it. So Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7. I'll read them for us. That every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities, authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of, you, because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers, attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear whom fear, honor to whom honor. So, uh, you read this passage, I think this is very relatable to today. Is the government making these mandates because they're attacking Christians? No, they're not. They're doing it for our best interest, for everybody, our community's best interest, our country's best interest. We have these, uh, these different things that are coming in place from our government uh, that are restricting us maybe from meeting together. Uh, they have our best interest in mind, and we need to keep that in mind. It's not like a situation where they're telling us you can't preach the gospel. You know, like we see in maybe Acts and them defying the authorities that are there and, and, and things like that. That's not what we're talking about here. 
Uh, we're talking about um, talking about a government that is trying to care for us, and it's so important that we that we are listening to these things. I believe uh, because for, first of all, our, our testimony in our community. Uh, needs to be a good one you know even when it talks about like getting in trouble only like with authorities only do that if you if, if it's for doing good not for doing bad <laughs> you know uh, we shouldn't be getting in trouble for doing bad things from the authority and that's exactly what this would be it would be we'd be a stench in our communities you know not for not for preaching the gospel not for that kind of thing but uh, uh, you know so we need to we need to be very careful with this and I say this, if we had no other way to assemble together, no other way to meet together, then maybe this would be a different story, perhaps. I'm not sure. But we do have so many other options. We have, we have this technology. We have the phones. We do not forsake one another in meeting together over the phone, over FaceTime, over these different uh, things that we can use uh, to encourage one. Still meet as a small group, but do it over technology, whatever it might be. Uh, still be doing those things, still be committed to one another is so very important. That's why it's a huge blessing that we have this kind of technology, uh, for sure. So I hope you're encouraged today by these five things that you can be doing, that we need to be doing as a congregation. I'll list them off for you one more time. I, first is draw near to the Lord. We need to be focusing on our relationship with God repenting and turning away from those different sins that we have in our lives, turning to Him, getting into His Word, memorizing. If you have time to do some memorizing, to do some, some serious study and prayerfully doing that as you, as you read, praying and, and communicating with God the things that are going through your heart and mind, you know, and just being open to God about what's going on in your life, your worries, cast your burdens upon Him for He cares for you, right? So draw near to Him because Jesus has made it possible to do so, which is amazing. Secondly, hold fast. Hold fast to your hope in Christ. We need to hold on to that. Don't let go. Don't put your hope in other things you know, for your life. Let's remember what truly matters. Remember, our life is not about ourselves. You know, If you've given Christ your life, it's no longer about you. It's about Him. Right? So let's hold fast to that. Let's live according to that. That Jesus is our number one. You know, He is the most important not only the number one, he's the number one in all situations. Let's also consider one another in order to stir one another up in love and good works. Let's encourage one another. That is the fifth point. Exhort one another. We need to be encouraging one another, considering, not just thinking about ourselves. We need to be considering others and how we can be a blessing to them. How we can uh, be ministering as well to our neighbors uh, during this time. How we can be sharing the gospel. Let's be focused on these things. And lastly, do not forsake the meeting together. Uh, and we can do that over so many different uh, things and technology that we've been blessed with, whether it be a phone or through different uh, conferencing things. Let's not forsake one another in these things. So that's, I hope, an encouragement for you today. I'd like to close our time in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are faithful, as our passage tells us. You are faithful, and we can hold fast to the hope that we have in you, Jesus. I pray that wherever people are at today, whatever, whatever difficulty, whatever worry, that they be able to cast that upon you, Heavenly Father, and trust you. We know that you're faithful, and we desire to serve you regardless of circumstance, whether we get a virus or we don't, or uh, that we're willing unto death to just continue to be faithful. Uh, to you, Heavenly Father. And uh, we, just, we just thank you for the privilege that it is to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.